Hello, I'm Richard Murphy, and today I want to talk about something that's quite important but may seem obscure, and that is changing the mandate of the Bank of England. Now, this is important because right now the Bank of England are the people, the only people, who have got a clear direction given to them on how they should manage the UK economy. And that's because since 1997, the Bank of England has theoretically at least been independent of the government and has the responsibility for ensuring that inflation in the UK is less than 2%. And that, believe it or not, is the only goal that our government says that it has for the management of this country. Now that's quite extraordinary. I also happen to think it's extremely unwise at this moment. That's not because I'm indifferent to inflation. Inflation is important. It's because there are other many more important issues than inflation. Now let me talk through how I would change this. First of all, I don't think that we should be focusing on something like inflation whose importance relates solely to the maintenance of the value of debt. Now what does that mean? Well, Debt, of course, is owned by people. Most people owe money, but a few people in society, those who are by definition amongst the wealthier part of it, are owed money, whether individually or collectively through banks and other financial institutions. And the mandate that's been given to the Bank of England is effectively designed to make sure the value of their debt does not go down because of inflation. Now, let me just give an example of that, and it's a personal one, but it's totally appropriate. When my father bought the house that I was brought up in, in 1959, it cost him £2,000, and the mortgage appeared to be crushing at that time. When he paid off that mortgage in, I guess, 1984, 25 years later, it was about a month's salary to pay off the final balance. You know, it was insignificant by then. The mortgage had been reduced so dramatically by inflation in the meantime. This is what I mean by inflation reducing the value of debt. And that's why the Bank of England tries to control inflation so that debt continues to have value and you continue to have that burden of payment in real terms. Now, I don't think that's the right priority for our economy at the moment. I don't think it's ever been the sole priority for our economy. But at this moment, I think there are other, much more important things. What are they? Well, first of all, the creation of full employment. We are going to face an unemployment crisis. The government is already braced for four million people to be unemployed, and I've suggested in this video series and elsewhere that a figure of well over five million is quite possible. So we are having, going to face unprecedented unemployment in the UK. And the Bank of England should, I think, be told that part of its economic management of the UK should be in the interests of maintaining full employment. Now, there's nothing very radical or shocking about this. That is the mandate that the US Fed, the US Federal Reserve, that is, which is the equivalent of the Bank of England in the USA has. They are told to maintain full employment. So I'm not being desperately radical by saying the Bank of England should do the same thing here. The second thing that I believe that the Bank of England should be told to do is to manage the economy so that we can make a green transition to a sustainable economy in which we can all live for the long term. Now again, I'm not being desperately radical by saying this. The last governor of the Bank of England, Mark Carney, has now gone on to become a special representative of the UN and other organisations with regard to this very issue because of the concern that he showed whilst governor of the Bank of England for ensuring that we did have a green transition. So to say that the Bank of England should be doing this is vital now because that is what we have to achieve. I think there's a third objective that we have to also put in place and that is that inflation control was only done through changing interest rates as far as the Bank of England was concerned. Well, for the last decade we've had almost no effective changes in interest rates and everyone now is going to be astonished if interest rates go up to more than 1% over the next five or more years when at the moment they're at 0.1%. This is a control that has ceased to have any real function. So if the Bank of England is going to be responsible for assisting management of our economy, it has to do so in cooperation 
with the Treasury to make sure that the two together, using what are called monetary policy, that's interest rates, and fiscal policy, that's changing the overall level of the government deficit by spending and tax and the relationship between the two, are coordinated. So the Bank of England has to be told explicitly that it is no longer wholly independent, but has to work with others, and that seems right. Finally, of course, there should be an inflation indicator for them to follow, and I think that's important. But 2%? Why 2%? Why not 3%? Why not 4%? Nobody knows why 2% was chosen. Nobody knows that it's right, and let's be clear, for a long time, most countries around the world have absolutely struggled to come anywhere near it. It would be very unlikely that 3% would cause us any problems. And frankly, 4% wouldn't do much harm either. It might even begin to deflate the value of people's debt and actually let them spend more on the things that they really need. Let's compromise for a moment, but let's change the mandate from 2% to 3%. Having four goals, full employment, the sustainable economy, cooperation with the Treasury, so that we have coordinated, coordinated economic policy, and a higher inflation target would create the flexibility that our economy now needs so that it can be managed in the interest of everyone as we come out the other side of coronavirus. Failing to address this shows that we would not have considered the changes that are required to achieve that goal of living in the new existence, the new world that we're going to have. So this is fundamental. It may sound obscure, but changing the mandate of the Bank of England is critical to showing that we are accepting the challenge of the new world that we now live in. Thanks for watching this video. If you've enjoyed it, I'm pleased. If you want to see other videos like this, there are links below this screen. If you want to subscribe, hit the subscribe button. Follow me on Twitter as well, at Richard J. Murphy. Look at my blog, Tax Research UK. And if you'd like to donate because this video series is being largely paid for by donations. There is a donations button on every single post on my blog. Thanks a lot.